Here's a goof who thinks that a god makes you good even if you don't believe in one. Father Larry Richards, my mentor, my friend, and someone that I have instructed for years. Yeah, it's why I am the way I am. <laughs> Father Larry, <laughs> Dr. Ray, I had a friend whose you mother- You had one, that's exactly correct. I had one correct. friend. Yeah. His mother became more frail. She struggled with dementia. The latter several years, he built by hand, he built for her an apartment, wow. took care of her, fed her, carried her to the bathroom for a couple of years because she was immobile. He, more than almost anybody I know, sacrificed for his mother. He's an atheist. Mm. Now, what do you do with the idea? You know, I know a lot of people who don't believe in God and they're nicer than Christians. Sure. Nowhere to, <laughs> part of the reality is people, everyone is created in the image and likeness of God, right? So we are all created good. Okay, then how come not everybody is good? Sometimes the way apologists put this idea is that a God wrote morality onto all of our hearts. If that's the case, then why does anybody ever do anything that isn't good? Why is it so often the case that one person's conscience tells them the opposite of what another person's conscience tells them? Why are there moral instructions in the Bible? Why did Yahweh have to write down commandments onto tablets and then send Moses down the mountain with them if he already wrote them on our hearts? If we wouldn't listen to what's written on our hearts, why would we be any more likely to listen to what's on some tablets or in a book? Why did God have to tell Adam and Eve not to do something evil, like eat from the tree, if they were created good? So just because the reality is an atheist, he still was created by a good God, whether he believes in him or not. And the good God still is some way in his life and operating his life. That's how he can do anything good. It's because of the grace of God. That makes it sound like without a God, nobody could ever do anything good. Why would that be the case? If there's no God, why would people be incapable of looking after their elderly parents or even just occasionally accidentally doing things that are helpful to other people? I could understand the argument if he were saying that if there were no God and we were not created good, we would have no inclination to be good, although I'd still disagree with it. But why would not being created good make us incapable of doing good? He hasn't accepted that. But that's where, it kind of, let's deal with that issue for a moment because they often deal with saying Christians are Christians because they do good things. What? Who says that? Well, by definition, that's not true. They do things because of God who lives within them. But a Christian, you know, you can be an atheist and do good things. You can be another religion and do good things and act like a Christian. Is this dude conflating doing good things with acting like a Christian? That's like when Jordan Peterson said that Sam Harris isn't an atheist in his actions because he doesn't rob banks. How did Christianity, a religion that's only existed for the last one or two percent of human history, obtain this monopoly on all good acts? But a Christian is one who no longer lives, but Jesus Christ lives inside of them. A Christian is one who no longer lives? That's weird, considering the fact that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that the Gospel of John said that whoever believes in Jesus shall have eternal life. I guess that just means that they would have Jesus' life, and that they would still die. That seems like kind of a misleading bait and switch. So meaning that a Christian isn't just one. You don't become a Christian by doing good things. You're a Christian, so you do good things. Wait a minute, do Christians Christians do things because they're Christian or because they were created good by a good God like everyone is. But atheists are good people because they can do good things too. We believe it no matter what. But to go into Christianity, it's a much deeper reality. What does that mean? Does that mean that being a Christian makes you behave better than an atheist? Because there are plenty of atheists who behave better than some Christians. That people who are good, they can be good than not even Christians but they're good because of the Christian God. Huh, you got it? Sometimes I'll say to people, if you want an example of what Christianity mm -hmm. can do through you, Look at Mother Teresa. It's interesting how many people cite Mother Teresa as an example of this great and wonderful person, but don't seem to even know what it was that she actually did. She ran hospices that were quite paltry considering the amount of money she took in from donations, which were often from pretty shady characters like the Duvaliers. Nobody knows exactly what was done with that money. It could easily have been spent on providing better services to the people in her care, but was not. Mother Teresa believed that the suffering done by the people in her hospices was good for humanity, and she campaigned against both contraception and reproductive rights. Okay, uh, you find very few atheists 
doing what Mother Teresa did for the love of God. Sure. And thank Christ for that. So I guess you would compare the two, uh, even though someone who doesn't believe in God is capable Absolutely. of and good behavior. Years ago, I, when the first time I ever met Mother Teresa, I'm a young seminarian University of Pittsburgh, and Mother Teresa comes in and she was speaking to the, the public university, University of Pittsburgh, to the social work group, and she just got this beautiful talk done and everything else. And I forget, I'm watching, I'm sitting here, I'm about five pews away from her, seats away from her, and she started taking questions. And this one guy raised his hand and he says, Mother! I have no respect for you because you do what you do for God and there is no God and I cannot take when you go around doing all these things you do for God. Yeah, that totally sounds like something that definitely happened. I have a problem with how Mother Teresa did what she did, but that has nothing to do with the fact that she did it for God. I don't care why she hoarded a bunch of money that she could have used to improve the care of the people in her hospices. It makes no difference to me whether she spent it on blow or sent it to the Vatican. The point is, she shortchanged a lot of poor dying people. It's ironic that she was giving a talk to social workers because when Christopher Hitchens talked to her, she told him, I'm not a social worker. He said that she assured me that she wasn't working to alleviate poverty, she was working to expand the number of Catholics. And Dr. Ray is entirely right that what Mother Teresa did, withholding medicine and better lodging conditions from the poor and dying because she thought their suffering is good for the world, and proselytizing to the vulnerable and desperate to increase the number of Catholics, is probably not something very many atheists would do. Now, I wanted to jump over the seats. Well, is this a guy in a seminary? No, no, no. Okay, it was just no. a social worker. Okay. So, and I, I'm, I wanted to jump over the sheets and show him God by no. sending him to God. Which is also not a sentiment an atheist is likely to have. But that ain't what Mother <laughs> did. Mother sat there and says, oh, I feel so sorry for you because God is so alive and he loves you so much. And I'll never forget, I watched this. This guy melted back into his chair. Why? because she spoke to him about who she knew. She didn't argue with him, debate with him about the reasons we believe in God. She spoke to him from her own experience. So this guy went from being mad at Mother Teresa because she did supposedly good things for God's sake, to being rendered totally placated by her talking about her warm and fuzzy feelings about God? I don't know about you folks, but I'm definitely convinced that this is a thing that absolutely happened. And the atheists, and I've known lots of atheists, some of my kids who I put most of my time in, they become atheists, and I think, what? You know, because, and most of the time, the people I met, even my kids that left, they're atheists because they want to do things their way. Even if I believed in a god, I would still do things my way. Don't you believe that people have free will? Do you think that they lose that the moment they believe in a god? Since you can do whatever you want, whether you believe in a god or not, there's really no reason to become an atheist if you want to do things your way. This is not the reason many people become atheists. If there's a god, it would be silly to think you could evade his authority by merely not believing in him. If this is how atheists reasoned, then every atheist who ever wanted to commit a crime would vehemently deny the existence of cops. And if they believe in God, even if their way is a good way, you know, taking care of your mother. And that, but to believe in God is going to cost them something. It's going to cost them their life. You know, I can't just tip in, put a little toe and say, okay, I might believe in God or I might not. To enter into relationship with God means that you're going to have to die. You're going to have to die to yourself and your wants. Well, what if your wants are already entirely good? If they are, then why would you have to die in yourself and your wants? So some people say, I would rather believe things or not believe things because then you don't have to answer to anybody. You can do completely what you want on your own. If that's the reasoning that leads people to atheism, why does nobody apply this logic to cops? Why don't the folks who want to break the law routinely say, I don't believe in cops? I don't know which author it was. Oscar Wilde comes to mind. He became a Catholic. Yep. And, and a woman, he had a life and a half before uh, he became a that's Catholic. That's exactly right. Exactly. A woman said to him, <laughs> you call yourself a Christian. <laughs> you are one of the more obnoxious, difficult people. And he said, ma'am, what you say may be true, but you should have seen me before I became a Christian. <laughs> I guarantee you, Oscar Wilde was a lot more fun before he became a Christian. There you go. Absolutely. Does atheism have the power to transform exactly. like Christianity does? I think it does. While I don't believe that people often deny that a god exists because they want to sin, once folks do come to the conclusion that a god does not exist, they sometimes do treat folks they formerly regarded as sinners with a lot more respect. Uh, absolutely not. And again, we're n n nowhere does a church ever say that anyone who's not a Christian is not a good person. We say the opposite 
all people of goodwill. And we invite all people of goodwill into this relationship with the God who loves them. But don't the folks who don't have a goodwill need Jesus the most? Why wouldn't you be most enthusiastic about reaching out to them? Because again, I think the deepest need in everyone is to be loved. And we do everything to try to get that. And so when we start dealing with God, if we see God as this big monster that you know controls or doesn't control, the puppet master. Exactly, then I don't want anything to do with that. Well, neither do I. And not wanting anything to do with it doesn't require you to deny its existence, so it's silly to think that this is a reason people are atheists. I want to be in relationship with someone who's going to love me, who's going to transform me, who's going to give me hope. Why would you want to be in a relationship with someone who's going to transform you? It sounds to me like you don't like yourself very much if you want somebody else to change you. And so our job is to reach out to all these people, Catholics, non-Catholics, atheists, uh, agnostics, whatever, and say, there is a God who loves you. And if you just come a little way, God will come the rest of the way to you. Yeah, that was my reaction too, Dr. Ray. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help. Thanks so much.